Welcome back to another episode of the World on Drugs podcast with me, Steve Fury. We got another what, folks? We got another banger on our hands because we're talking all about the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. Now, listen, if the opening last week was a little, uh, let's say, choppy, it's because um, I was so excited to talk to these guys. I actually did the intro for them, forgetting that we are part dubs of the Lower Peak Zalisco boys. Guys, this group is hands down the most gnarly one I've ever talked about. We've ever talked about. This one was done by my producer and research extraordinaire, Dr. Joe Haswell. And also a new uh, new thing on this, if you wanted to see the video podcast, you could just go on Spotify. Spotify is now going to carry my, pick, my podcast via video. And every week I'll throw up a question there that you guys can answer and it helps me build my podcast. Always like and subscribe. Uh, Dr. Joe met him in uh, the Grand Ole Opera, and he hooked me up with these cool little toys. Now behind me in the studio at my apartment, not the Comic Short Records studio. Um, other than that, guys, another banger from Dr. Joe Hospital. This is about the new number two cartel in Mexico that started in 2009. The new Jalisco generation cartel has quickly risen to number two status and is a constant war with the Sinaloa cartel that was formerly run by who? You guessed it, El Chapo. If you don't know El Chapo was running the Sinaloa cartel by now, either through this podcast or just being a deviant that we desire here, you, my friend, need to go take a lap. Okay? Go take a lap. Or listen to the, what do I got now, 50, 60 podcasts of the most evil, weird people in the world. This group has made a name for themselves with brutal violence and strict territory control. If they want a territory, they will take it by force, and they do not care if they are removing a rival cartel or a small rural community. They use violence for control and are responsible for multiple massacres throughout Mexico. People, massacres, okay? Massacres. I believe in a 10-month spun, spun, they killed around 300 people. Got to check on that one, but massacres, not, not even, not even public shootings i'm talking 10 different people times they shot 18 people they use violence for control and were responsible for multiple massacres throughout mexico multiple massacres throughout mexico today i'll talk about the most violent things that group has ever done also this is going to kind of be like a zalisco Jalisco kind of two months, okay? This one we're going to open with the gnarly shit that this group did. Should we have done a background of who they are? Who El Mencha is? Should we? Eh, I don't know. Eh, I don't care. Me and Dr. Joe came together, melded great minds from the dirty south of Kentucky to the beautiful piss stained streets of los angeles to just go let's give them the goods let's give them what they want they don't want history they don't want knowledge they want brutal fucking violence that's literally happening 200 miles from my apartment right now and when i tell you what these guys done um i got sick twice which I don't really know if I really ever have before. And it's not pedophilic stuff, which is normally my... I got, I'm so <laughs> Someone act those intolerant. I'm pedophilia intolerant. I get sick. Makes me want to throw up. And I want to beat the shit out of somebody. So uh, this one is also just a one It's a one part. One done. About 45 minutes. Me and my guy Morgan Mazel from the Big Humble Podcast. One of my best friends. Do this one. Chemistry on fleek, repertoire, titillating, conversation, bang de lang. It's a b- 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 banger, folks. My guest Morgan Mazel. If you don't know Morgan, he grew up in New York. He is not a comedian, but he's friends with all the comedians. Kind of like a, like a black turtle, not like a turtle, um, <laughs> an, uh, amphibian. Some turtles are in film, but more like, uh, you ever seen the movie um, or the show Entourage? He's like our black turtle, but just cooler. 
I guess. Turtle was kind of fun, though. He ended up having his own tequila, right? Avion, now it's a real thing. People drink it, and it's from an Honorage. But now Honorage isn't that cool, so is drinking Avion tequila cool? Eh, probably not. So if you want to check him out, check him out on the Big Humble Podcast. One of my best friends. Um, how did we meet? We actually met through one of my exes, one of the reasons I moved here. Uh, he was living in her living room at the time. When you're a comedian, when you first moved to L.A., California is such an expensive city that, um, you know, you're in your early 20s, you're in your middle 20s. Um, could even be late 20s, honestly. You end up living in some living rooms. People go, hey, I would never do that. I'm above that. I would just go, yeah, you, you, this, then you didn't want the dream enough. Morgan's dream, to be a waitress at the comedy store, but also do podcasts with uh, some of the best minds in comedy, like my guy Matt Lockwood. And the big humble podcast. They're blowing up on Instagram and TikTok. They got tens of thousands of followers and stuff like that. Pretty great stuff. I uh, met him there. And uh, to be honest, it was very funny. Like a lot of my friends in L.A. ended up enjoying my ex's friends more than her. Oh, look at that. Look how funny that could be sometimes. You don't really know what you get till you come here. So by him living on couches, me living on floors for the first little while I was in L.A., you, be, you get bonds, and now this man is, honest to God, one of my best friends. And I think comes through in the podcast, and we've, in, in, uh, we've definitely done some Trash Panda activities. Um, if I ever do anything with all my group of friends, he's there. So, very great to have him on the podcast. What have I been up to? Um, I've been good. I just went to the last thing of my birthday. My girlfriend got me the Smoker Club tickets. Um, it's a music festival, and in this music festival, just to name some of the people, there were Kid Cudi, ASAP Rocky, Schoolboy Q during the Oxymoron album, they had Lupe Fiasco doing Food and Liquor, ASAP Ferg, Domo Genesis, Dom Kennedy, um, Playboy Cardi, so Asheroth, I'm talking like 150 people, or not 150, probably 50 different acts on three different stages if you've ever gone to a festival uh, there's a small stage with newer acts middle stage middle age middle acts big stage the big famous people so me and jordan go fuck it you know we're 30 we're not i'm not coming from the nine to midnight 9 a.m to midnight schedule i don't care that much so we go let's go at 3 p.m 3 p.m right Good. i mean if, if i'm getting at three getting there at 3 p.m i plan on watching 3 p.m to one o'clock acts Nine. That's it's still pretty good, right? They should. This is another thing I want to say. They should sell tickets at at festivals by age, right? Because I don't. It doesn't need to be VIP. It needs to be age. Because I don't want to be battling some child to be close to the stage. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Up in the front, put the kids, the youngins, the twenties. They've got nothing to do. They're standing in the middle, late twenties. Got a little bit more money, a lot more large hats. So if you're sitting behind them or they're standing, you know, in the middle, I feel like the large hat ladies will sit down. And then us old people uh, back by the dumpsters and the outhouses eating hot dogs by the handful, we, we, we got, we're all sitting down, you know, we're sitting down. It's time to sit at a concert, okay? If you're not a child. You sit. It's nine hours, folks. And you're jacked. And your girlfriend's got a big fucking hat. And I'm here just trying to eat two hot dogs that I waited. This was the beginning of the festival, let me tell you, okay? We get in. Try to upgrade our seats to the VIP. There's a little area where you get chairs. So we go, fuck it. We get there. The traffic's so bad. We're trying to get there to watch 2 chains in the schoolboy queue. Into Playboy Cardi, into ASAP Rocky, Rocky, and then into Kid Cudi, my favorite, probably musical artist, one of the old only people I might fangirl out on. Okay, when we get there, uh, Jordan forgot her phone, so our um, internet tickets aren't available. We tried, to I tried to download every app. You couldn't go through a different way; they wouldn't do it. We had to get a code from her phone to work it. So we go into Will Call, hour, hour and a half. We miss two chains. Okay. Hour and a half. It's okay. I miss things all the time. Definitely not mad at her. Just more at the situation. Get inside. We go, hey, why don't... Because we also bought GA Plus. So in, in the in the guide, it said we were getting these seats. But in person, who knew a place run by potheads wasn't going to be that efficient. 
get in there. We notice we're in the back. We're on a lot of, uh, let's call them cigarette smokers. You know, I'm talking about a little pungent, a little weathered in the face, a little too tan. You've been sleeping outside, cigarette smokers? We go, okay, let's see if we can upgrade our tickets. So we spend all of Schoolboy Q's set trying to upgrade our tickets. No luck fun oh and Wiz Khalifa was there after that then we spend all of Wiz Khalifa's set trying to buy hot dogs okay this you know four hot dogs uh, let's take an audience poll we're gonna do this everyone in the class this is gonna be a pop quiz we need you to guess how much four hot dogs cost okay we've got fifteen dollars you're not even close what do we got in the back 50 that's up there you guys really thought it was 50 okay we're gonna do it now put down your pencils and the answer is 75 dollars for four hot dogs i will say it's two hot links so you know made sense in the end there so as of right now we have waited in line for two chains tried to upgrade our tickets for schoolboy q stood in line for hot dogs during wiz khalifa and then we go let's watch playboy cardi Okay, if you don't know Playboy Cardi, he came from the ASAP mob group from New York. He has gone into a very Marilyn Manson-esque um, trajectory with his career. Okay, he um, his, his music is maybe ad-libs, which is things like, yeah, yeah, skit, 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 murder, like that kind of thing. He doesn't really say much, but his fans, there's this very weird thing with his musics that is melding hardcore mosh rioting with ad lib hip hop. So I don't think whereas if you listen to like, you know, hardcore metal music back in the nineties or early two thousands like Romstein or something, that makes you want to punch someone in the face. Right? That gets your blood going. Whereas Playboy Cardi's is kind of someone dressing up as that but then their music not reaching that doesn't incite violence you know music that incites violence to me like industrial 90s music right a lot of chains um neon lights in a dark room you know blade like like the <laughs> like blade the vampire hunter would be chopping up Al or aliens to and other vampires to this type of music. Play with Cardi is not that, but his fans to try to pretend it. So what his fans do, uh, luckily in the section we're in, which is very nice, they start uh, breaking apart the fencing. The fencing that one would lean on into kind of like, you know, when you what, see seating and there's a, there's a hallway kind of separating the seating to be like, like train tracks, like you poor people are up here on the grass and much rich people are going to be in seats. And then there's the VIP pit in the bottom. So they br they break those, pick them up, and throw them. So as you can guess, when there's a large group of people and there's no, like, railing to keep them in, um, the whole concert had to be shut down. So Playboy Party did one song. And then the whole concert proceeded to be shut down for another two and a half hours because of his fans, because of a man going, Yeah, yeah, chopping, and uh, so we now, ba like that that's what his music is maybe a little darker beat but it's not like doesn't make you want to punch an old woman which hey if my music doesn't make me want to punch an old woman why am i listening so he breaks that um concert is ruined up until for about two and a half hours people are leaving okay because people have been here noticed that the parking situation is atrocious blasphemy um, a direct attack on our Lord and Savior. So they're getting out. They're thinking, how can you have the structural integrity of this railing to back up all these people that are going to freak out or something in just a couple hours? Concrete doesn't set. Turns out, though, two and a half hours later, concrete somehow set. ASAP goes up and does about three songs. Jordan and I, um, before these three songs, we go, fuck it. We've been splurging. Jordan and I, we now have enough. Not, We don't have much money. I do not make a lot of money. But I make, when you're splitting a place with somebody, you can get $70 worth of hot dogs. 
Okay. Sometimes you can just get $70 worth of hot dogs. Who knew that one day when I was 33, I would finally be at the place financially where I could get $70 worth of hot dogs. So we say, fuck it. Let's get some pretzels. I mean, is there something better than a pretzel? When it's done right, warm, fresh bit of... I like the cupped mustard. I don't like putting mustard on it because it's... Then then they're telling me how much mustard I get. When you get the cup of mustard, I tell you. Okay? And then what? What does the pretzel really need? Even more than the mustard. Say it together, class. Fat fucking crack nuggets of salt. Right? The Wetzel pretzel salt in the Uncle Annie, whatever her trans name is. I mean, Uncle Annie's pretzels, that sounds like a very trans-friendly business. You know? It's like, what are your genitals? Kind of got ovaries, kind of got these weird penis things. Is that bad to say? I don't know what their genitals look like, but I would guess a pretzel. Is that rude? I don't know. I don't. It's not a bad thing. I like pretzels. Ovaries kind of already look like pretzels. It's just a joke. So we go in there. We're like, fuck it. Let's splurge. Freezing also, by the way. All merch is sold out. Um, also, this venue in San Bernardino. Okay, let's name San Bernardino. What do we know about San Bernardino? Um, the mass shooting? Yes. And that's what I'm, Guys, what I'm telling you, these, these massacres that these new Jalisco Generation Cartel are doing are way bigger than any mass shootings. And they get far more disturbing. So the mass shooting and also that shitty playground. When I tell you Glen Helen is one of the most beautiful venues I've ever seen in my life. It is insane. It's like a venue inside of the Sound of Music. Like where that white bitch is dancing everywhere. And because she's like a nanny or like a magical nanny. I don't know. That wasn't a, that wasn't a movie. A boy like me would have been playing Legos and watching. So great venue. So we go, okay, let's go. Middle of the night, all the merch is sold out. So we buy FEMA blankets. Actually turned out pretty good. They're just like the little Mexican blankets. They're 20 bucks. Not a bad deal. So we're wrapped in those. And we go, you know, fuck it. About to watch Kid Cudi, one of our favorite acts. Let's get some pretzels. The abomination that these pretzels were. I mean, I'm going to say this here. How do you fuck up a pretzel? What are we saying, folks? Warm, salt, mustard, right? Chewy. That's what. Well, that's a good degree, with a, a, us as a group. Basis of a pretzel: warm, chewy, salted, mustard. If you're putting ketchup on a fucking pretzel, you deserve to be shot. Shot right in the face. So we get it. I come back. Notice, yeah, not that warm. Hmm. I come notice. Uh, no mustard. Okay. Hey, the salt is what it gets it through. Right. Really, it's a, it's, the pretzel is just a vehicle for the crack nugget salt. No salt. Okay, this bitch. I'm not telling you if they're man or woman, but their tendencies were bitch-like. Gave me a cold pretzel with no salt or mustard. Almost revolted. I was like, give me that railing that pr- fucking Playboy Cardi's fans did. I'm hucking it at, uh, at Uncle Annie. And his trans pretzels. So we go, fuck it. Fuck it. Walk up there. We noticed they started opening the seats that I wanted to get in the whole time. We go, fuck it, let's get in here. We go, excellent seats for Kid Cudi. First off, he came out in a wig. If one of your favorite artists comes out in a wig, you know something good about to happen. Or they've been doing a lot of cocaine. Either way, memorable set. And Kid Cudi went on to have one of the... Uh, this is a fantastic concert. Fantastic, man. It's a blessing to go, and I thank my girlfriend that we went. And then we drove home. Took for hours. Forever. But since my girlfriend uh, forgot her phone and made us wait in that uh, hour and a half will call line, she drove home. You know, didn't work. It was... Uh, you know, stood in line for two chains. Tried to upgrade during school by Q. Got a hot dog during Wiz Khalifa. And then Playboy Cardi ruined the day. 
Not a good day. But honestly, I was able to spend it with Jordan, and God damn, do we have some fun. You know? I will say this, though, you know? This is something I've been trying to talk about for a long time, and I don't know if other feel. I feel like there is, like, a man period. You know, it's definitely not monthly, but it's, like, once every three to four months, at least for me, where I just get... Now, when I say this stuff, it doesn't mean this happens to women on their periods. Well, it just happens to me. I get very rude, I'm very short, very negative. You know, I feel like a lot of times I can be a pretty cool person. Last couple of weeks, I have been so negative. Just talking shit. I went to this festival. I'm looking at all these people. I mean, I'm going to say this right now. Maybe the ugliest festival I've ever been to. These people should have been wearing layers. Okay, let's start that off. Okay, when you buy a ticket to a festival, you have to put in your age, your height, and your weight. Because quite a lot of these people, okay, should have been sitting in the back with me and wearing a lot more layers. Okay, is that is that a bad thing to say for me? I don't know, man. Just wear some goddamn layers, folks, okay? Who are we trying to face it here? You don't need to be wearing nipple tassels. When you've got dog nipples, you've got six nipples, your rolls are so large, you have the body of a corgi. What, Steve? Do you, do you think you're Mr. Handsome Man? Listen, folks. I have the face and body of a radio DJ. Okay. I get it. But I'm also not wearing nipple tassels out. So this, but these crowd are just people that spent a lot of money to watch their favorite artists and they went out to have a good time. And I am just railing on these people in my head. And it's just, I've kind of, I'm coming out of it now. I definitely think I am. But I, this is the thing. I want to know if other people agree. I might make that this question. Do you believe in a man period? Last couple of weeks, I've been, ext- and I think they last longer, but they're more rare, like maybe one or two a year. I get hungry, I get fat, I get mean. Man, I remember my stepdad used to go through a man period. It'd be like once every, but he was getting older. See, I think the man period happens different than menopause. See, menopause, y'all stop getting periods as you get older. Whereas I think men start getting more and more periods. Like if you're a young guy, you're 22, 21, you might get a man period once every two years. Me right now, I'd say twice a year. I get in my feelings. I get depressed. Why am I depressed? My life arguably is better than I ever thought it would be. I'm living my dream. I have a podcast that people seem to be liking. I have a fantastic girlfriend. I have fantastic friends. But you just become a little bitch. So I'm going to put that question this week. Do you think men get periods sometimes? Am I going to be canceled with this? You can't monotonize getting periods and men can just get them. I'm just saying something happens with my moon, my chakras, my brown eye, whatever it is. I need more corns and team and polythamine or some shit. All right. Um, let's see what I got coming up this week. Bert will be at the Greek tomorrow. If you don't got tickets for that, you are missing out. After that, we are going to Kansas City. Kansas City, 7th and the 8th. Then on the 10th, I'm flying back to do my JFL audition. Went straight to callbacks this year. That'd be like going straight to the second round of interviews. You guys have seen my battle with this. You guys seen my battle at Failing My Dreams multiple times. And you've seen. So let's see how it goes this time. Most likely next week I will be on the I'll be on the road from pretty much the seventh and I come back the tenth for one night and I go back out. Then twelfth we're going to Midland, Texas, thirteenth San Antonio, fourteenth Amarillo, then we're going to Tulsa, I believe Oklahoma, and then we're coming back on five seventeen for buried at the comedy store. We have Andrew Santino, Trevor Wallace, and it's my Alfonso Portella, and it's me and Craig Conant's show. So if you are in L.A. and you want to see me, come to Buried at the Comedy Store on 517th with me and Craig Conant, Trevor uh, Wallace, Dave, uh, Dave Hella might be on it, 
Oh, no, Darius Bennett's on it. It's a sick lineup. One of the best in the city. Come by and check it out. And then 528, I will be with Andrew Santino in Tahoe. That man also has a big show coming in L.A. right now. You guys should go check that out. I can't wait to open for him. He's one of my favorite comics, one of my favorite dudes. Real fucking man's man. Kind of like an L.A. man's man, which is kind of like me. Um, Right now, Netflix Fest is going on in L.A. strong. I had to uh, miss two shows because it just didn't work out. Shout out to everybody else killing. Shout out to my guy, Darius Bennett. We're going to get him on this podcast soon. Other than that, um, that's all. What should I suggest? My suggestions would be uh, check out Better Call Saul, man. Um, I'm fi- Me and Jordan are finally almost done with it. No, we're actually almost done with the fourth season going to the fifth. It gets hot. People all have been telling me it's better than... Breaking Bad, up until the fourth season at the end, I don't believe so. It's a lot slower. Um, but it's pretty good, and everyone says this new season blows your fucking tits off. So check out that. Check out Narcos if you want to start learning more about this stuff. We're going to be coming out with the background of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel next week in the next two weeks. Dr. Joe Hofswell's is doing that, that one for us. All right, so... That's it, folks. Come and see me with Bert soon. I'm at the Comedy Store twice a week if I'm in L.A. Or Set Up L.A. Or Trash Panda coming out also tomorrow. Whatever happens, man. Um, Shout out to Comedy Store Records, Tony Gidley, John Sosis, my guy Bruce Gray for helping out a couple weeks ago and helping out every week. Shout out to West Coast Gardens, my favorite weed in the country. And let me tell you about West Coast Gardens, people. I smoke this with Bert Kreischer. I smoke this with your favorite comics, and let me tell you, each one of them says it's the best. I've brought this bitch all across this country. I went to Nef- or Nashville, smoked it with everybody, and it's a reigning champ. So if you're in Sacramento, go and check out West Coast Gardens. And if you're in uh, Phoenix or the Pacific Northwest, check out Grizzly Gardens. Also fantastic. So, guys, this is the new Jalisco Generation Cartel. Jalisco New Generation Cartel. English kind of translates. Uh, this episode we're doing with my guy Morgan Mazel. Check him out on the Big Humble Podcast. Thank you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you got to do. Share this with your friends. Podcast is getting better. Love you guys. Thank you for everything. Bye. Morgan Mazel, good to see you, buddy. Thank you for having me, Steve. I appreciate it, bud. No problem. From the Big Humble Podcast, one of my best friends. We just consumed about 30 to 40 pounds of ramen <laughs> and two backwoods. So we are on we're, a, we're there. We're on a level. Yeah. We'll see how this one goes. We're going to be talking about the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, not Zalisco. This is with a J. Um, Which you, one's the beer? The beer. Is that- Jalisco beer. Jalisco? Oh, is no, a beer? it's a juice, right? Oh, Tapatico? Tampico? No, it comes in like a bottle. It's like really orange. I think it's called like Jalisco. Burritos. Yeah, that is one. Yeah, 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 right. It's neither one of these gangs. All right. Okay, so this one is, uh, they started in 2009 and they're still uh, very active today. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel has risen to become the second strongest cartel in Mexico behind El Chapo's Sinaloa Cartel. However, they did not start out as the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. They began as the Meta Zetas, the Zeta Killers, in service of the Sinaloa Cartel to remove the Zetas from Veracruz. So definitely, uh, you know, Jalisco New Generation Cartel is very Spanish translated kind of vibe. Um, not a great name. It's better than the Zeta Killers. Zeta Killers, yeah. yeah. That sounds well, like a like a horror movie from like the eighties about like Zeta. a sorority that's just getting, like, mass <laughs> <murdered>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Zetas are actually. Um, I did a I did an episode on them. They were a group of. Uh, they were Mexican, um, like military that the United States went down and trained, and then Mexico was paying them nothing, and then the cartels were like, "Yo, we'll you we'll add two zeros onto whatever you make." So they're like mercenaries. So then they came and then they started working for everybody then they started getting too powerful they were the first guys who started chopping off people's heads okay 
than hanging them from like bridges. Yeah, it's a pretty big jump in the game. Yeah, they <laughs> jumped it up a whole new level, and then they became their own cartel, and then these guys came to kill them. So you know, not a great nick, not a great name. Uh, do you have any funny nicknames uh, you've come across? Maybe that cheese fellow we were talking about later. Oh, cheese. Yeah, his name was Charlie. Uh, then we started calling him Cheddar, and that was just different types of cheeses. Eventually, became cheese. And that same group of friends, I had a buddy Luke Malone. We called him the mailman. Cheese uh, and mailman. Yeah, that was, like, mailman. yeah. <laughs> that was like a cartoon with like a cat and a beaver. It was like our uh, defensive backfield for our oh, cheese and mailman. Cheese and mailman. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. They, they better be good with those <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> Other funny nicknames. I'm trying to think. We have a friend, my buddy Rock. His name is Ryan O'Connor, but his initials are just Rock. We call him the big guy. The big guy is yeah, big. He's like six seven. It's huge. I always love when the people go like big guy to like the little guy mm-hmm. and tiny to the big guy. So I did work with a guy. He was a security guard. He was like at least like seven feet. He went by tiny. Yeah, that's yeah. a fun one. Huge. In June of 2009, three bodies of Zeta's members were discovered in an abandoned truck near the Cancun Quintana Rue. The bodies were found execution style with gunshot wounds to the back of the head. With the bodies, a note was found proclaiming, we are the new group Matazetas, Zeta killers, and we are against kidnapping and extortion, and we f- will fight them in all states for a cleaner Mexico. You're selling me so far. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? We're against kidnapping and extortion. Pretty good in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Gunshot wounds to the back of the head and left in a truck. These guys were fucked. Speaking of fucked, where's the weirdest place you've ever had sex? Oh, man. So it was a beach in like St. Martin mm-hmm. when like uh, it was like after hours, like it was like I think like one in the morning. No one was there. You could just hear the waves crashing. The only uh, moonlight, the light we have is from the moon. Yeah, nice. it was fucking beautiful. Yeah, that was cool. I had, um, I think I might have told this one. There was this one teacher who tried to kick me out of school and then I uh, had sex on his desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So fuck you, dog. Looks like I won that one. And I made that motherfucker apologize to me. Because what happened was I came, I I was kind of like a bad guy. Not bad, but I just, everyone knew I was troubled youth. Yeah. And so my senior year, I got kicked out of the football team because I had a little bit of weed on me this one time. So I went to a different school. But at the uh, semester, I came back. So it was like the first day of the semester before the school started. I came back to school, started looking around. He thought I was a... like illegally on campus, so yeah. his dick got hard, and he's like, "This is the first time I can get his I ass. can get this motherfucker. I can put hands on him, yeah, because he's trespassing." So he gets me, he gets me by the back of the neck and my arm hard, like I had bruises, and he's pulling me. He's get you go. You're not supposed to be here. And I got one of my homies, my one of my best friends at the same time at the time, David Kunisaki. His girlfriend was like a head of the student union, one of the nicest people at the school, very smart. She saw him manhandling me and then we took me in the office he tried to get me suspended but i didn't do anything wrong then he had to go to the to the uh principal and he had to apologize to me that's a tough look it was great he drove a fucking green golf jetta well just like i'm just imagine the place you have to be in your life already where you want to beat the shit out of a 17 year old then you think you're justified you finally get that chance then you have to end up apologizing to him by the end of the day (laughs) so now now he's on podcast telling people that he had sex on your desk (laughs) Just keep what twisting up? the fucking knife like 12, 13 Robert years later. Fuck you, dog. Look like you're winning. You stay winning on this side, Jack. He's wearing sunglasses, yeah, too. Yeah, he's school milk. We out here drinking Red Bulls. He's still the got the same there. green Ford or whatever. Yeah. Does, I hope your desk still stinks, motherfucker. <sighs> Life's funny, man. Just be careful what 17-year-olds you try to manhandle. Man. You might have got the right one. These bodies and this message is considered the first major appearance in Mexico of the group that would become the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. The bodies found in the truck were linked to online videos that were popping up at the time featuring roughly 20 to 30 mass and armed cartel members surrounding three Zeta members while they confessed their crimes and named all of the law enforcement and political figures who had helped them gain power in the region where they operated. Oof. Mexican authorities began tying these videos directly to the Metazetas and uncovered that they were a very militarized group looking to eliminate the threats to the Sinaloa cartel on the Pacific Ocean side of Mexico. That's kind of the one I always want to go to. Okay, so I'm going to admit, great way to start this cartel. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board with the Metazetas. If they've got merch, a podcast, 
We're in. I also feel bad for just like the three centers that got cornered. It was yeah. like, fuck. And you got three dudes. I gotta give dudes. up everything. Yeah. You gotta get out everything. Let's see if they keep their message. What's one relationship that started great in winter shit? Could be with a re- job, a friend. Ooh, a relationship that woman. started great and went to shit. Damn. I, I, I'm usually good at like getting those people out of my life like early. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, no, actually, so I will say this. There was a, a woman I was dating like maybe four years ago, pre-pandemic. Uh, started off great. Everything was just amazing. And then I found out like maybe a month in, she used to be in like a cult. Oh, I was like, yeah, this I think doesn't this work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, she has her branding on her back. To like yeah, Jeff. she's uh, <laughs> she's 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 Looney Tunes. I had one buddy of mine that was one of my best friends for a long time. Ended up having sex with my ex girlfriend. That's my one rule, folks. If you're gonna be friends with Steve Fury, I've had this rule since day <laughs> one. We don't have sex with other people's exes. It's too much pussy in this world, and too much dick if you're a girl too. It's a good rule too. Unless they end up together but also, forever. Yeah, but it's also going to be kind of hard for like, uh, well, no. Okay, so would you be as mad if one of your homegirls had sex with an ex? Or as one, as one of your uh, dude friends? Because at that point, just, no. that's pimping, pimping. Nothing I could do. Wait, that. wait. So a girl had sex with one of my exes? Yeah. Like lesbians? Yeah. Wow, interesting. Nah, it's not real sex. It doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> It That's what I'm like, saying. We're not working uh, yeah. with the same equipment. You're you know rubbing what I mean? noodles yeah. together. You're no penetrate. You can, ne- you can never yeah. eat my pussy, okay? Yeah, you, you sat know? outside <laughs> the club. I got in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go. We, you didn't get in, dog. Have fun, ladies. Yeah, have yeah, fun. Y'all crazy, girl. <laughs> oh. <laughs> September 11th through May 2012 Veracruz massacres in the debut as Jalisco New Generation Cartel. The real name is the Jalisco Nueva Generacion Cartel or the CJNG. The CJNG declares open war on all Mexican cartels and announces they will be taking over Guadalajara. First thing out the block saying everybody can get that smoke. Yeah, dude, that's like that's like uh, some 50 Cent had a rock. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All like, y'all yeah. are noticed. <laughs> I got shot down nine times. <laughs> and Guadalajara, that's us. Yeah, yeah it's don't even ask about it. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool out the block. Uh, I'm very interested in these guys. This open war quickly became one of rampant murder and shocking body counts. They do this through abandoning... More trucks full of bodies with a note. However, this time it happens at 2 in the afternoon in front of a crowd of commuters. Around 2 p.m. on 9-20-2011, two trucks are driven in the middle of traffic near a mall in Boca del Rio, Veracruz. Armed men emerge from these trucks and proceed to unload 35 dead bodies into the street while pointing assault weapons at stop traffic. Bodies look like they had suffered torture and had been and or had been killed execution style. A note was left saying again, no more extortions, no more killing of innocent people. Zetas in the state of Veracruz and possible politicians helping them. This is going to happen to you or we can shoot you as we did to the guys before. People of Veracruz do not allow yourselves to be extorted. Do not pay for protection. If you do this, it is because you want to. This is the only thing these people, Las Zetas, can do. This is going to happen to all the Zeta fucks who continue to operate in Veracruz. This territory has a new proprietor. Oof. This is the coolest gag ever, dude. That is a uh, badass opening monologue for yeah. whatever they're doing. <laughs> that Stopping is- traffic, un- dumping out all the bodies, then telling everybody. Yeah, that's uh 35 bodies in a mall. Yeah. If you pay for protection, it's because you want yep. to. We got you. Know. Yep. They already got the uh, heart of the people. Yep. God damn, they ain't fucking around. But just one group against all the cartels in Mexico is going to be very hard to do. Just like, uh, for instance, how many chickens do you think it would take to kill an elephant? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, like, you you got, you think, like, you think, like, the mass of an elephant, that'd be the mass of chickens. But I think it's going to be so much more chicken power because, like, yeah, I it's piercing too. the skin. Every time the elephant steps, it's going to crush a chicken. Yeah, because the chickens aren't going to get together like a Power Ranger being. Yeah. It's still going to be just... Chickens I w- aren't very focused either. So now I'm no. thinking, like, 10,000 chickens, maybe. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go hundred thousand. Yeah, I would say they more likely have to drown in chicken. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put the full of chickens on top where it can't be anymore. Or maybe it's like a slow roll, and you do like Mick chickens, and you're just like waiting for like a heart disease to catch up. <laughs> Either one, it's gonna be a lot of them. October 2011, the CJNG is found responsible again for a massacre. 36 bodies were discovered in three different houses by Mexican authorities on 10-6-2011. At least a dozen more bodies were discovered in more abandoned houses over between uh, October 7th through the 9th as well. Between their massive announcement and these massacres, CJNG has killed over 100 people in the course of 18 days. As a response, Mexican military has dispatched Veracruz to scourge cartel violence however this does not discourage the cjng at all i mean that the efficiency levels here are just insane <sighs> yeah they came out with the bang dude it's like someone dropping their first mixtape and everything it's like drake like that on so far gone mixtape where everything was just a banger they're averaging like nine bodies a day or more than that like, yeah I th yeah i think it's five five at almost still. five and a half six <sighs> What's one idea you thought was going to be a good idea but turned out not to be? I mean, what's one idea that I thought was going to be a good idea that turned out to <laughs> good. be a good idea? <laughs> uh, I don't know. About a year ago, I was crossing the street, deciding not to look oh, right. Yeah, uh, that turned out real rough for your boy. Yeah, describe yeah. that. Describe what happened there. Uh, I got hit by a car, broke my leg in three places, was in the hospital for about two weeks. Then I couldn't walk for about six months. Yeah. Still limping around, but... We're getting, we're getting better. We're getting better. Yeah, yeah. It's a better upgrade from before. If you see me and Fury on the street limping around, just, yeah, you know. Just, this looks like a yeah, bomb went yeah. off. Just let us be. Yeah, just let us be. <laughs> just maybe give us a ride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll gotta, pick us yeah, up. Yeah, go and pick us up. Don't, don't. You guys are talking about the Xanders, right? Yeah. Like, yep. Yep. That's us. <laughs> Sleepy, stoned, and limping around the street. Full of noodles. Full of noodles. <laughs> Buck full of noodles, baby. Come here. 12, 22, 20, 11. The CJNG attacked three public buses during the day, killing 16 people and three U.S. citizens. This is kind of where they take a turn. Yeah. For the worst. That's money, tough. Money but also, if you're a U.S. citizen in Veracruz, why are you on the bus? That is true. Figure it out. Yeah, take something. It's not that expensive. It can't be. No, just fly. Take a helicopter around. I don't know. <laughs> 12 23 2011 Mexican authorities receive a tip about bodies on a dirt road. Ten bodies are discovered. All are handcuffed. Nine of the ten were decapitated. December 25th, 2011. Thirteen bodies are found in the trailer of an 18-wheeler truck. Uh, February 9th, 2012. Fifteen bodies are found in a hidden mass grave near Acayucan, Veracruz. And May 3rd, 2012, it is confirmed that the CJNG are responsible for killing five Veracruz photojournalists who had taken pictures of their massacres. On this particular day, three photojournalists with their bodies stuffed into multiple plastic bags were discovered in a canal. Over the course of this seven-month massacre, neither, oh, nearly 200 people dead and showed that the CJNG would rule through force as they indiscriminately murdered anyone they saw as a threat to their power. This series of massacres was just the start. Well, being for the people didn't last long. Uh, they are just another group in Mexico taking advantage of its infrastructure. It's like a, it's like a bad guest in their house. What's the weirdest thing a guest has ever done in your house? Uh, weird. That's, that's, I mean, you know me and how I live my life. It's pretty much uh, everything. Okay. Yeah, everything's kind of a go. So <laughs> I don't know. I've had like two uh, random people have sex in my bathroom before. How many people were at your house? Was it just you and these two people? No, it was probably like seven or eight of us. Hmm. But it's like a, it's not a big one. No, it's not a big bathroom. Yeah, like one, yeah, we know. Yeah, one foot's on. Yeah, uh, the music uh, can't possibly be that loud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> what's the little poop stool that everyone has? Now? Oh, uh, squatty, potty? squatty potty. One yeah, leg's really on good. the squatty potty. <laughs> they got the bidet going on. My dog's sitting by the bathroom going crazy. It's like, come on, guys. <laughs> I was at this party when I was a kid for like a year. This one girl was just always having these parties and her dad would be there and they were like, they're like high school, good high school. Like party. bangers, yeah. 50 people, 100 people. Yep. There. So we're all passed out in the, in the living room and this was the time her dad was gone. So it really went up and I was barely awake in the morning and I watched a woman get up, squat in the middle of the carpet, 
sit down, piss, then lay down in it. Then when I woke up, she was gone, but there was a puddle of urine there on the carpet. And then the woman whose house it was got a hose and started <laughs> spraying the inside of the house. It's just one bad idea. Yeah. I was like, I think I would have just come with the piss. <laughs> then the soaked hard with floors, but on you, dog. Also, the piss in the middle of the floor, then laying it is like blacked out. Are you a dog? Yeah, <laughs> like, that one was gnarly. Oh. Expansion of turf wars and service of the Sinaloa cartel. March 21st, 2012. Under the orders and employment of the Sinaloa cartel, the Jalisco New Generation make a video announcing that they will be coming to Mika Hokan. M-I-C-H-A-O-C-A-N. I don't know how to pronounce that. Mahakan? Uh, Mahakan. I yeah. think that is Mahakan. To fight and eradicate the Knights Templar cartel. 4-12 through the 21st of 2012. Bodies are discovered throughout... Mahakan. Mahakan, all with cardboard signs marked by the CJNG nearby. Bodies are dismembered with show, si, with, <clears throat> with signs of torture and all belong to men affiliated with the Knights Templar cartel. So they're just taking the show on the road. Yeah, now they're going after everybody. <laughs> this is, so they're fulfilling on their prophecy. They're, yeah, they're doing it, but they're just now um, just on the bad side. Feels very sloppy, but. Yeah. April 17th, the same year, 2012, in the town of Nueva Laredo, considered a stronghold for the Las Zetas, the dismembered remains of 14 men were discovered stuffed into plastic bags inside a Chrysler minivan. <coughs> this is used to announce that the CJNG will be cleaning up this area as well. The primary reason for the attacks in the Mahakan was not drugs, but getting a foothold in the Mexican avocado trade. <laughs> This is actually very true. Uh, most avocados from Mexico literally fund the cartel. That's wild. I know. The, uh, you don't you don't think about our avocados and cartels going together. Yeah, well, I just don't think about like 14 guys getting killed over produce. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> just so a white woman could have sprouts yeah. and bread on a brunch. <laughs> Somebody with an annoying hat and some yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> There's just a headless body <laughs> hanging. Good lord. Uh, oh, man. What two... Totally normal things become really weird if you do them back to back. Ooh, totally normal things that become really weird if you do them back to back. Hmm. You should go. Maybe if a woman blew her nose, then kissed me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty yeah, gross. That's, yeah. <laughs> I would go. What else could you do? You know, that old two leads back to back. It's just yeah. I'm trying to think. Oh, if you fought someone and then held the baby, <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> it's a good way to defuse the fight. Yeah, like, hey, whoa, whoa, time out. I'm on base. Yeah, I got a baby. Yeah. The base is baby. They just sitting there kind of beat up. Just like, yeah. put that fucking baby down. The second you put that baby down, I'm going to fuck you up. Okay, so maybe like breastfeeding and then uh, getting your, like, your titty sucked. Yeah, that would be by gross. A, by a by human, human man. Yeah. <laughs> or, or an animal. Yeah. Anyone sucking your titties after your baby or anything, it's... <laughs> Getting a little weird. <sighs> oh, drinking coffee, taking a nap. Oh, that's a that's, good one. That's probably like, yeah, that's the simplest one I can think of. May 9th, 2012. The Jalisco massacre was discovered when an anonymous call was made to police about two abandoned vehicles. These vehicles contain the chopped up remains of 18 bodies. As we're seeing, these guys are going not only from let's fight for the people to go to the darkness, but they're going from shooting people in the head to chopping up bodies. Yeah, straight, yeah, decapitation. This is... This is your taking up. This is this is psycho shit. I mean, it's all psycho shit, but this is like... Well, well you're with them at the beginning. It feels yeah. like they kind of have... Yeah. You know, they're trying to protect people from being sorted. Now they're just... Now they're doing cocaine and, and chopping people up. Name of avocados. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they better be hoss. Yeah. If they're just normal, yeah. and this is what's happening. 18 separate heads were also found in various grotesque states of decomposition. Some heads were frozen, some were covered in lime, and the rest were put in a margarita for us to drink. <laughs> <laughs> nice lime soup. Yeah, nice lime soup. <laughs> and the rest were just falling apart. Much like the other massacres, this was used as an announcement that the CJNG was going to begin clearing out the enemies of the Sinaloa cartel. You know, because this is kind of what happened with the Las Setas, where like these, these cartel groups train these guys up and then these guys become stronger than the cartel group and it's like a fucking uh 
Rottweiler. Yeah. Once that thing has power, it's probably going to bite you. You've this Rottweiler to yeah. fight everybody else. Yep. And now, now it's, it's going like after you. Though. Yep. Yeah. All of these massacres are carried out by the CJNG while they are cl still close allies to the Sinaloa cartel. Around this time, the fighting ends as both sides have endured massive losses. However, the leadership of the CJNG has grown the taste for wanton violence and exerting power through massacres. A few years go by and they reemerge as one of the boldest massacres yet. What are some fun and interesting alternatives to war that they could settle their differences with? I mean, what's the classic? Like, just like a game of chess, you know? Oh, wow. Okay, going Russian with it. I mean, but just, it, it is war. Mm -hmm. But no one has to die. Okay. But I guess it, it doesn't really have the stakes, so. A game of strategia. strategia yeah, we're in Mexico, right? Fucking yeah. get your best 11, I'll get my best 11. Yep. We'll settle on the pitch. Oh, there you go. Soccer game? Mm-hmm. I mean, they probably kind of do that. They all. I, I was thinking yeah. of this one. Competing kissing booths at the fair. <laughs> See, which cartel can get more kisses? <laughs> sound up from this time for the both of us. <laughs> Winner gets the avocado. Whoever smooches better. <laughs> oh. Who are the judges? Going after the Mexican military. March 2015. A convoy of Mexican police forces is on its way to Acatlan, Jalisco to help curb the cartel violence. The CJNG encircled the army convoy in a valley blocking off all routes of escaping and burning the vehicles with the people inside alive. 15 police officers are killed and five sustained injuries while they are bombarded with machine gun and grenade launcher fire. I mean, that's it. But, you know, they found a way to go. I mean, if you're going after the military, you had to think of a way to get out of that one. It's like you're a mad scientist. Yeah. If you were a mad scientist, what scientific experiment would you run if money and ethics weren't an issue? Ooh, if money and ethics weren't an issue. I'd probably uh, run an experiment to see which mixed race baby is the best. <laughs> That's yeah. a pretty good one. <laughs> Let's get down to the brass tacks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Turns out yeah. Filipino yeah. and Indian. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> They're buffer, stronger, and very kind. Very kind. I like that one. That one's pretty good. I would do maybe like... To see if it's possible to get special powers, like under yeah. some, some kind of duress, are you able to do anything? So there'd be like bodies and bodies if you really push yeah. people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and the answer would be like, there's not. Sadly, yeah, there's uh, you can't fly. No matter how no matter much I pull their toenails, <laughs> this guy would not fly. <laughs> and I got a lot of toenails. Yeah. I made a necklace. I made a necklace. <laughs> okay, sick ass necklace. <laughs> I thought it'd give me magic powers, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> Just smell. We also ruled out Telltale <laughs> Necklace on the Magic Power. <laughs> we put out that one. We're trying. Yeah. <laughs> We're plugging away. We're plugging away. Fury Industries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> May 2015. As the new Jalisco generation continue to gain control all over Jalisco, Mexican military is called in to put an end to the wanton violence as CJNG members are murdering people for not being aligned with them, regardless of gang member status. Knowing the military is going to launch an attack, the CJNG create 30 different blockades throughout Guadalajara to impede military forces. I'm pretty sure Guadalajara is the state. So, like, <clears throat> this is considered one of the boldest attacks from a cartel against the Mexican government and demonstrates the power of the CJNG as they proceed to destroy a military helicopter with a rocket launcher during the fighting. These massacres show the CJNG become increasingly violent and bold in their attacks. So they're like an army now. Yeah, these are like guys. Yeah, dude. this feels like a military like stance that like you block off all 30 entrances in the city and you're taking out helicopters with... Imagine RPG. if you like lived in that city and you're like, oh, at least the helicopters... And they fucking blew up. You're like, oh my God. If we get <laughs> spaceships to help... It's like we're so fortunate to live in America. We can worry about like what your pronouns are. Yeah. Instead of if, if the local gang that's turned into a military is going to fight the government today. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. It. It's like when you have nothing to worry about, you start worrying about. Yeah, but a lot of people down there are really offended too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah, I like Jew and Mexican yeah. jokes. What are you talking about? It's like nah, don't dude. care, buddy. Yeah, don't it's a care. War going on outside. There's a head. There's a Chrysler minivan yeah. full of eighteen <laughs> decomposed heads in my backyard. In my backyard. <laughs> How'd they get in my van? <laughs> 
It seems like these guys have learned from other cartels and stepped it up to a terrifying degree. If someone asks you to be your apprentice and learn all that you know, what would you teach them? Oh, buddy. Uh, all that I know. So I teach them how to have the most meaningless conversations ever. <laughs> okay. But do it in, in a very entertaining Enjoy way. Yeah. yeah, where it's enjoyable to where those conversations mean something. I don't know. They probably get some good FIFA tips. We need some yeah. good food. Yeah. I mean, by the yeah, you wouldn't get have any like real world skills, but you know, I think you'd generally be a better person. I think I would be able to teach someone how to drive three bears in. You know, yeah, like perfect. For, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, you're even pretty good. Some part of it. Like, you know, number one. But I also feel like if I had a friend, it's just like, here are the keys, buddy. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna. You gotta learn yeah. sometime. <laughs> First tip: take fountain. Yeah. Second tip: bring a road soda. I would do. I cannot teach someone stand up. Uh, I could teach them. Um, how to do a show right? I, I'm pretty good at producing. Yeah, shows. how to run a show. I get yeah. you could. Yeah, I could do that. Other you could that. also teach someone like just good habits to have if you want to be successful. Good and come on, yeah. yeah. Doing for just put it in your own hands. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for other people to do your shit. Yeah. El Mancho takes over and declares CJNG to be at war with the Sinaloa cartel. The current leader of the CJNG is known as El El Mencho. And he is considered a shrewd businessman who will change how the cartel operates in order to gain maximum money. Money always corrupts yeah. everything, even cartels. Although the CJNG started out saying they were going to stop cartels that dealt in extortion, bribery, and human trafficking, El Mencho saw these as unexplored opportunities as the CJNG continued to massacre and take cart territory from other cartels in Jalisco and its surrounding states. Oh, maybe Jalisco is the state, Guadalajara was the city. Yeah. That makes sense. Once considered allies to the Sinaloa, the CJNG announces in 2017 that they are going to begin cleaning up the members of Sinaloa cartel in Jalisco in the surrounding states. That would be... Man, it sucks to be a cartel. Um, this happens shortly after the arrest of El Chapo. The level of violence at the CJNG only continues to grow. According to the Armed Conflict, loca Conflict Location and Event Data Project, the ACLED. So they like just follow where all these like violent conflicts happen. There has been 298 different violent crimes involving things like abduction, gun battles, street fights, grenade attacks, bombs, IEDs, and sexual violence that can be attributed to the CJNG from January 1st, 2018 till December of 2020. See, that's like fucked up too, because we said no abductions, no kidnappings. That was in the beginning. That was our mission statement. Mm -hmm. And here we are doing abductions and yep. sexual violence. And why? It's because some fucking businessman got in, got in charge. <laughs> also, El Mencho feels like a pretty racist fucking Yeah, I know. Name. Is he uh, a yeah. Jewish dude? What's that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one seems a little on the nose. <laughs> And this is like Robert Rosenblum yeah. that runs it. Um, oof, this seems like a bleak future for the people of Jalisco. If you were transported 400 years in the past with no clothes or anything else, how would you prove that you were from the future? Maybe just like my my uh, confidence and overall uh, comfortability yeah. talking to white people. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like, like, oh, I'm something. This, this, this guy, guy got me from the from future. <laughs> You ever Maybe we should believe like, him. I don't know. He seems <laughs> pretty fucking comfortable. Does he know even somebody? With, even with his dick out. Yeah, guy hasn't asked for clothes yet. He's <laughs> naked in here asking where they sell chicken cutlets. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys know what a chicken parm is? Yeah. There's you a guys have any idea what a friendship sandwich yeah. is? No? No? Okay. <laughs> <sighs> even during a global pandemic, the CJNG is keeping its violence numbers at record levels. According to that same ACLED chart, the second place cartel for violence has 73 different violent crimes recorded over the same period. As in the Sinaloa cartel, Knights Templar, everyone you've heard about have 73 the second, and they had 298, was it? That's insane. That's insane. That's like Barry Bonds number. Yeah, it's like yeah. even when he's just walking and everyone's yeah. like, they're the best, I guess. Yeah. They're just going <laughs> to... The CJNG has been actively fighting against all other cartels since they moved towards becoming a full-fledged cartel in 2017. They are an incredibly violent group that's only going to get more violent, and some of its top leaders are on the FBI's most wanted list. However, 
They are smart, where most of their violence is completely contained to Mexico, so U.S. authorities have had little involvement with curbing the wanton violence. That's all I always say here. If you want to deal drugs and kill people, you have to keep it to your community. Yeah. Because once it gets out, once that, if you're in America, once you do a shooting and that stray bullet hits some little girl or you start doing like the follow people home thing that they were doing here. It's just it's like even in America too. Like if, uh, yeah, that's during the crack epidemic, if, uh, th there's a killing in Beverly Hills. Yeah. Like I think the government would take a little bit more interest yep. into it. Yeah. But you just, so that's what always happens. And then when we watch it and when, on this podcast, it's always the, no one gives a shit until they start killing people out, not playing the game yeah they truly have the country of mexico at gunpoint if you are held at gunpoint and told that if you didn't press them with your dance moves you would be killed what dance moves would you bust out no, i'm busting out the harlem shake like it's 2000 the harlem shake. Yeah, you're gonna course. grab the bottom of your t-shirt yeah, up here all that bro <laughs> i'm gonna do my uh Alan McBeal baby dance. Yeah, no, yeah. I think you're getting <laughs> off with that. You're good to go. I wouldn't have to see. We're in, I was thinking about doing a weird uh, choreographer thing of a guy who can't dance trying to teach people little moves. <laughs> It'd be so funny, too, if they were like, we have no idea what you're talking about. They're about yeah. to be like, no, look it up. Look it up. Accurate, swung Alan down the McBeal baby. Like, Honestly, he crushed it. You kind of <laughs> did it. And baby dance like that. <laughs> modern cartel using modern psychology with a touch of cannibalism. Okay. It's a twist. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Not going to lie. <laughs> Bro. The CJNG continues to frequently pop up in international articles that showcase their insane levels of violence and fear mongering. In February 2022, a video was released showing a CJNG standing over the body of a rival Sicario, reportedly from the Sinaloa cartel. In this video, the person holding the phone and the person standing over the body taunt the corpse and how weak he is. The camera person then goes in to show that the Sicario has been handcuffed and his chest has been crudely ripped open. The hitman mocking the corpse is revealed to be shown holding his heart and saying that it will provide him with strength strength in his fight as a CJNG member against the Sinaloa cartel. He then proceeds to take several bites of the dead man's heart for the camera. This is a blatant act of psychological warfare to demonstrate that the CJNG are here to stay and they are only going to come more ruthless and violent in order to gain power in the Mexican drug cartel wars. That's like the, the wildest wrestling promo like ever. <laughs> It's like, it's like, I don't even need your heart. Did cartel. Oh, yeah. You will see me at the gates of hell as I eat your heart. <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. Oh, yeah, senor. Oh, negative. <laughs> oh, Dios <laughs> mio. <laughs> what of the horror are in the hands of the Jalisco New Generation <laughs> cartel. <laughs> uh, that may have been the most... Worst thing we've ever said on this podcast. Holy shit. What would be the worst names for these three types of businesses in a music park, a hot dog stand, and a new cartel? So, I, honestly, I think I have the same name for all three. Okay. Murder Park. Murder Park. Yeah, Murder, murder Park. Murder Dog. Murder Dog. <laughs> and the Murder Cartel. The Murder Cartel. <laughs> murder Cartel might be good. Murder, yeah. But Murder Dog, like, uh, murder dog. I don't know. Red, there used to be a burger place called Murder Burger, but then they they said it was too offensive, and they had to change it to Red Rum Burger. So case. that's what uh, people in New York, that's what they call White Castle. Murder Burger? Murder Burger. Destroyed your yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll tell you a story about White Castle. <laughs> So I'd never had it before. And if you don't know White Castle, they give you these tiny, tiny uh, hamburgers and they serve it to you in like luggage style. <laughs> it's called a case. <laughs> so I didn't know how bad they were. And I ate them and I was like, you know, White Castle, Harold and Kumar. I ate it and then everyone is just ripping the gnarliest farts yeah. ever. And then we start, uh, we've got the day before we had gotten McDonald's the day before that we got another one. So we started trying to find what was the best, um, combination of fast food burgers. So we would do like the buns of a McDonald's I mean. and then the meat of this. And then I woke up and you can't shit on, this is me with Burt Kreischer. This is on the first run on the uh, hot summer night store. 
So when uh, you can't poop in a bus because or shower in a bus because there's a tank underneath that holds everything. You can poop in a bus, but it will just smell like shit because it's a tank. S- but I had to blow, and I was in f- I was in Pennsylvania, so they had to hot bag it, which is where you put a b- a grocery bag on the seat, and then you shit into the bag and you throw it out. So somewhere in Amish country, Pennsylvania. If they if they start listening to podcasts, don't open that Bucky's to go back. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the you're eating like two day old McDonald's mixed with White Castle, but you can't shit on you the box. Like, yeah, the rules. <laughs> what, 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 the rules. Hey, pal, you, I mean, it's on you, dog. Yeah, what do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> oh, it was so bad. And then we had to like, dude, we have these like little you sleep you sleep in these little cubbies, and they have like this really thick. Uh, like uh what do you have on windows curtain yeah and so like everyone's farts got so bad that we had to like open the curtains to air out the little area that was pretty that's uh <laughs> pretty gross i mean i don't know i'm thinking of, like a white castle shit like it's not all coming out in like one thing where i can no. th- i'm gonna have or, to have like multiple bags you know what i mean well luckily one bag did but the funniest oh. one was me having to carry a bag of my feces through everybody and then chuck it out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> and no one slowed down. It was yeah, about an 85 yeah. mile per hour shit that hit those Pennsylvania freeways <laughs> in Amish country. Oh, man. That's disgusting. We got that was one, fun, though. It was fun, yeah. We got, we're coming to an end here. Um, gets really fucking gnarly. Wait, so he was just eating the dude's heart. It gets can you find? Can you watch the video online? Uh, yeah, I can look up for after. What what what, I, what we're gonna see right now is uh, actually far worse. This is okay. the worst thing I've ever done on this podcast. What happens in the next two paragraphs? An article from the Daily Beast detailed that it had been reported that the CJNG has schools across their territory in Mexico where they train young men to be killers, and only the most ruthless survive. They are put into fights with one another and forced to eat the heart of the loser in order to gain strength and strike fear in those who oppose them. Once again, there is a school. There are schools across Mexico for the CJNG where they train children to fight each other. And the child has to eat the other person's heart. It, like, it doesn't sound real. You know this what I mean? This is 2022. I know. I, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it sounds like uh, like if someone wrote this for me, we'd be like, yeah. oh, that's insane. Like, that's yeah. like too fucking, yeah. That can't, that's not real. Oh, my God. Reports have also said that members who vomit or gag on hearts are ridiculed, tortured, and punished for not being strong enough. Sometimes, even after going through all they have gone through, they are killed if they cannot stomach eating a human heart fresh from a chest. Look, dog, you just made me kill one of my classmates. Yeah. it's If my stomach can't hold the heart down. You're a kid. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm barely getting broccoli down at 12. Yeah, I can't, <laughs> I don't I think can't eat peas. Top notch. I can't eat peas to this day. <laughs> And I'm gonna have to eat Morgan's heart. Oh God! That's I ins- killed him. You yeah. killed him too. But now I gotta eat his heart. I won. Clearly, I'm stronger than he was. Yeah. Oh, that's that's insane, folks. This is real. This is happening. The CJNG are training people to eat hearts. What's your favorite hangover food? Uh, bacon, egg, and cheese. Really, bacon, yeah. egg, and cheese. What's your favorite place to get over here? You make it. Uh, make it egg trucks. Not that bad. Oh, egg tuck. Egg. Yeah, uh, I think it's a truck, something like that. I, oh. I, I don't know, I Postmates. It's pretty good. What else? There's a place in NoHo that I've been trying to try. It's called the Bed and Breakfast. Yeah. They look like they have delightful breakfast burritos. Breakfast burritos have kind of replaced a bacon, egg, and cheese because it's like there's not as good as bagels over here. Yep. But it's, all, it's still the same ingredients. Stuff. Bagel really is, for as many Jewish people are here and Hasidic Jews and all that, bagel game just really isn't popping. It truly is the water. Yeah, I guess so. It's yeah. really weird. My favorite would be a uh, pho. I eat a pho. Wow. That one. I see, yeah, that makes sense. It's on brand for you. Yeah. For yeah it's, soup. it's a soup. Yeah, it's a soup. That's kind Sweating of some thing. shit out. Sweating it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can eat it a little bit here and a little bit later. It makes me sleep. I go back yeah, to sleep. Yeah, a great reheat value. Yeah, great reheat. Yep. So in summary, <clears throat> over the course of 13 years, the CJNG has become one of the most violent cartels in Mexico and has risen to the number two spot in all of Mexican cartels. 
As of this time, they are not considered more influential than Sinaloa, but they have the clear goal of getting to the top by any means necessary. This cartel is massive, and although this particular episode just focuses on how they committed multiple massacres and horrific ways in which they train new recruits, there's still a ton of crimes committed by CJNG, despite its relatively short existence in the Mexico cartel world. Um, I think we're going to probably go back now and go through their infrastructure, but I just thought um, they, their crimes were so plentiful that I just had to get those, and I think we're going to get back. I don't know. I, when we started this, I had not seen it ending yeah. in, like, like cannibalism. Yeah. <laughs> not even light. I don't no, know. This is the biggest one. Well, do you think Heart. also, I was thinking, so they got caught with so many dismembered bodies, they're like, fuck it, just eat them. I just think really to like get a dude who does not give a flying fuck and you train him, train him as a young kid yeah. to eat hearts one day when he's 35, if he makes it, he's going to be able to do anything, murder yeah. a bunch of people yeah. and have no, no, even like yeah. second thought. About no, it. he's just going to be, the, he's like, dude, I was eating hearts when I was 13. I'll kill this, fucking, <laughs> I'll kill this kid. There's no more hearts. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kill him. I'm not eating. I'll kill him. No more yeah. goddamn hearts though. That's a deal. I ate one heart. <laughs> All right, Morgan, tell us about the podcast and where to see you and all that stuff. Uh, you can find the podcast, all places you find podcasts, The Big Humble. Uh, you can search for us on TikTok, at The Big Humble. Find me personally on Instagram, at handsome underscore Morgan, and on Twitter, at Les is Morgan. All right, thank you very much, buddy. Thanks One of my best me, friends. Bro. Shout out to uh, Tony in Gidley in the booth recording. Shout out to Comedy Store. Shout out to uh, probably Bruce Gray if he edits this. All right, guys, see you next time. Bye. Peace.